Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Rosebro, and I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. So real quick, you've heard the Ten Commandments. One of them is do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What does that mean exactly? In fact, if you've heard it and you think, well, that pretty much means when somebody says OMG in their you know, messenger on their smartphone or sounds like a valley girl in conversation and goes, OMG. Uh, yeah, if you've ever heard that and you think that's pretty much what that's referring to, yeah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like the video, ring the bell. To take God's name in vain truly does, by the way, involve saying OMG. Uh, but that's like the smallest, least part of what it means to take God's name in vain. The greatest way in which people take God's name in vain is when they lie and deceive in the name of God. And what we're going to look at today is a, a very serious example of lying and and deceiving in the name of God. And sadly, the secular media seems to have more discernment than many Christians, including Sid Roth. So let me, uh, let me get the desktop up, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of work here, and uh, we're going to go back to February 14th, 2019, to the uh, Sid Roth Live Unprecedented Miracles Now program. You can still find this on YouTube. And uh, unfortunately, there's no warning by uh, Sid Roth that two of his guests were engaging in blasphemy. They were speaking for God things that God did not speak, and we can prove it. So let's, uh, let's look at the setup for the program, and then we'll look at the problem here, shall we? Here we go. I, I'll tell you. My next two guests have created a sensation among my staff. Everyone wants to know about this here. Uh, uh, Jerry, this is your personal Bible. Yes, sir. Correct? How, long, how old is it? 19 years. And so it's a Bible. And I happen to know for a fact that it's sitting in mineral oil. Mm hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. How long has it been in oil? Over two years now. Over two years in oil. Over two years? Yes, sir. Now, my logic says that uh, it would, like I have underlined in a ballpoint, a pencil, or a highlighter. Right that not only would that all be gone after soaking for a couple of years. His logic says that. Not science. But that was just my logic. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> However, I called an expert. And he, an expert. Okay. He agreed with my logic. Whoa. Wow, he did. Wow. An expert agreed with your logic. An expert in what? He said this Bible should have... The, the oil should have so saturated it, it should have swelled up about a minimum of double in size. It looks as good as the Bible. As a matter of fact, 200 gallons in two years, Johnny? 200 gallons. That's a pretty specific number, don't you think? 200 gallons of oil produced. That seems awful specific. You, you, you and Jerry have been involved with this for a couple of years. Is it getting old? No, sir. No. It's brand new every day. We promised the Lord when it started that we would not let it become common. And it they promised God that they wouldn't let it become common. Everywhere we go, we celebrate it just like it's the first day of January 27th. You know, this is like Marian apparitions, you know, or like when... In a Roman Catholic church, uh, one of their statues starts crying blood or something like that. It's kind of akin to that. 2017. It's just as new today as it was then. And you see, what you have to understand is this oil is coming from this Bible. No, actually it's not. And uh, this is a good place to demonstrate that. 
Uh, recent news stories have surfaced February 19th, 2020, almost a year to the day, not quite, but almost a year to the day when that aired on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural program. Uh, there's a, there was a news story from WRCB-TV here in the United States. Ministry shuts down after local newspaper tests oil-producing Bible. Uh, does the Bible there look familiar to you? It, it, it should. So uh, let's check this out, shall we? Let's watch this little news story and find out why, oh why, uh, this ministry has shut down. A North Georgia ministry has shut down. This after our media partners at the Times Free Press called into question the legitimacy of the oil the group has been using to reportedly heal people. All right, so the oil itself has been called into question that reportedly heals people. Channel 3's Michelle Heron spoke to one of the ministry's leaders about the decision to shut down. Wyatt Massey's stories on a North Georgia ministry's oil-producing Bible has caught the attention of many. His name is Flowing Oil, caught this Chattanooga Times Free Press faith reporter's eye because of the number of people flocking to its services in Dalton. They got hundreds of people every week to come to their services, um, and it was much more focused on sort of worship and then this, this idea that the, the Bible was producing oil. The ministry's website includes testimonies from several people who say the oil from the Bible healed them. So claims the oil from that Bible healed them. But here's the problem. The oil it didn't come from that Bible. As he says he started to look further into the phenomenon when he received a tip. One of the main leaders of that ministry uh, was, was going to tractor supply um, in, in Dalton regularly and, and buying mineral oil. He had. Mm -hmm. So he got a tip, a hot tip. One of the main leaders from this ministry claiming that the oil is coming from the Bible, they were instead purchasing large quantities of mineral oil from a tractor supply company local to Dalton, Georgia. At vials of the oil from the Bible tested at UTC, and it matched the brand of mineral oil from the tractor supply in Dalton. Yeah, so they what they did, they got samples from the tractor supply company in Dalton, Georgia, got samples from the oil supposedly flowing from this Bible, and wouldn't you know it, it matched chemically, scientifically, proving that the whole claim that this Bible was producing flowing oil was a sham, was a lie, wasn't a truth. It was a breaking of the commandment. And, and let me show you the commandment here uh, from Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for God will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That's to use God, his name, his brand, his authority, in order to lie and deceive people. That's what blasphemy is. And um, that's what these fellows did. They blasphemed God and basically took his name in vain and said, God told us this. This Bible's flowing with miracle power from God. The oil's coming from this Bible. And uh, wouldn't you know it, one of the leaders was uh, making regular trips to a tractor supply company in Dalton, Georgia, buying large quantities of mineral oil. You know, maybe like, 200 gallons of it over maybe a 24-month period, something like that. You, you kind of get the idea. So let's keep going. Let's uh, l listen a little bit more. The ministry has since shut down, but Jerry Pierce, one of the ministry's leaders, told Channel 3 he stands by the ministry's work. Mm, yeah, they, they shut down, but they stand by their work. They, they shut down. Why would they shut down? Well, I would argue that the reason why they shut down is because they got caught in a lie. The problem is, is that this is the kind of lie 
where you lie by God's name and you end up blaspheming. This is blasphemy that's taking place. So let's watch Sid Roth, who has yet to pull this video off of his YouTube channel or issue any kind of a warning saying, yeah, this section right here, well, turns out these guys were blaspheming God and lying. 200 gallons have come from a single Bible. It is impossible for this to look normal. And guess what? You know, well, maybe, you know, fresh supply of oil on a regular basis from the Dalton Tractor Supply Company helped keep that Bible fresh. Not exactly sure how mineral oil works, but maybe that's one plausible explanation. Uh, how many vials of oil for anointing purposes have you given away? Over 200,000. 200,000 vials of mineral oil from the Dalton, Georgia Tractor Supply Company. Yeah, that's great. From what's one Bible? Yes. yes. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, what's mind-blowing is that you're this gullible. You know, the Bible talks about signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does, but um, it's sad when somebody just does this much research and finds out it's not a sign or a wonder, it's a sham. Guess what, people? <laughs> if this isn't a sign or wonder, I don't know what is. Well, it's not. And it makes me wonder, do you ever really, for real, Sid, do any real verification of any of the claims, the miracle claims on your program? Because if this one can be shot down that easily... I'm pretty sure the rest of them can fall pretty easily like dominoes. Yes. But, but even beyond that, the outrageous miracles that are happening. Outrageous, yeah, because apparently, you know, mineral oil purchased from the Dalton Tractor Supply Company in Dalton, Georgia. Ooh, man, you got cancer, it'll clear it right and, up. However, uh, Johnny, I have to ask you, in your opinion, what is God's purpose in this oil? God doesn't deceive, nor does God lie. God had nothing to do with this. For about 17 months, people would ask us why we thought God had given us the Bible, and we, we didn't have an answer. And then uh, one Sunday... He didn't. He gave you the Bible, the thing you should have been reading, rather than um, submerging in mineral oil from the Dalton Tractor Supply Company. The Bible does much better of a job because after all, God's word is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. You would have done people better by not lying, blaspheming, and breaking that commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, and actually rightly preaching from that Bible rather than coming up with a sham mirror. Sunday afternoon, he started to speak to us, and he told me, he said, he started speaking, he said, I'm going to tell you why I gave you the Bible. He said, man can only represent me. He said, but I manifest who I am and what I do. Mm. So let's back this up here. Now, we know that this, this Bible is a sham. And he's claiming God to talked to him, spoke to him. So here we know for a fact God didn't say any of this because God knew the whole time these guys were heading down to the Dalton Tractor Supply Company so this word of God that this guy claimed that God spoke to him, that's also a lie. For about 17 months, people would ask us why we thought God had given us the Bible, and we, we didn't have an answer. And then uh, one Sunday afternoon, he started to speak to us, and he told me, he said, he started speaking, he said, I'm going to tell you why I gave you the Bible. He said, man can only represent me. He said, but I manifest who I am and what I do. And he said, this Bible and this oil, is a physical manifestation of everything that you think is impossible. Yeah, God didn't say those words. He's lying. This whole thing was a, an elaborate deception. And he said, it's a manifestation of everything that you say is unbelievable. And he said, it's a manifestation of every prayer for every person that you've ever given up on. And he said, all I want is if you believe that's me doing this. He said, nothing's impossible. Nothing's unbelievable. So God wants us to believe that's him doing it. And God wants you to believe that. But God knows. 
and knew the whole time these guys were buying mineral oil and faking the miracle, buying mineral oil from the Dalton, Georgia Tractor Supply Company to the tune of hundreds of gallons. Unbelievable, and I haven't given up on a single person, a single prayer that you've ever prayed. You know, that was a great statement for everyone. No, it wasn't. It was a flat-out lie. God didn't say that. But you have to understand, that was a statement from God. No, it wasn't. Unless you want to make God culpable in these men's deception. For you, for you, I want you to just be in the greatest expectancy. I need to be in expectancy now. That's the key operative word you have ever been in. Jerry, how did this whole thing start? It started by him going to the Dalton, Georgia Tractor Supply Company and buying a large amount of mineral oil to go along with the plan that he had to fake this miracle. That's how it started. That's now just a matter of public record. Well, it, it started after two years of prayer. There was seven of us got together once a week, and we prayed for two years. And sound, I mean, it sounds so sincere, right? But we know this is a lie. One Monday night, we were in prayer, and we got out later than normal on our weekly prayer. But myself and my wife went home about 11.30, and... We stayed in our house all the way up to Friday. And my great-grandbaby. By the way, you know what this fake miracle's like? It's like when you wait for your kids to go to sleep on Christmas Eve. And you take a bite from the carrot. You take a swig of the milk. Fill the stockings with uh, presents. Mm -hmm. But see, the thing is, is that, you know, that, you know, is, is part of the fun of Christmas, apparently. But this guy is basically playing Santa Claus for Jesus and God here. And uh, and in, and then he got busted. He, you know, they figured out where, where it was coming from because he got a so, some reporter got a hot tip about, yeah, these guys are coming in buying large amounts of uh, mineral oil. So he's he's playing the role of let's pretend that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny exist because it'll build people's faith up. It was over to the house on Friday. I picked reached over and picked it up off my stand and next to my chair. And when I opened it up to read it, it was had spots in it. And it opened up in Psalms 39 is where it opened up. And I thought the baby had spilled something in it. So anyway, my Well, he's told this story so many times he believes it's true now. You know, he can deliver it, you know, without any, without blushing or any shame. Long story short, it come to the point of where wife and I investigated it. We, you know, we tasted it, we smelled it, and we, we said, it's oil. Yeah. From the Dalton, Georgia Tractor Supply Company. It's mineral oil. So we put it in a Ziploc bag. We took it over to Johnny and Leslie for them to see it. And from there, it just started increasing and increasing. Johnny, what were your first thoughts? I'm just curious. I really didn't have a thought. I saw it, I saw that it was oil, and I really didn't think a whole lot about it until we started noticing after a week that it started running through the Bible. It went all the way through the Old Testament and started into the New Testament, and then we just began to watch it and knew there was going to come a time if it kept flowing that it would start saturating the Bible. And it did. And when did you realize that you couldn't just leave the Bible out because there was too much oil coming out. Yes, sir. When did you realize that? Well, it took about uh, two and a half weeks or so after it first started, and the oil came out of it enough that it went all the way through Revelations, the Concordance, and it has saturated it all the way back. None of this makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I saw the map of the Middle East and Israel, and what, what, what? What happened with the oil on Israel on that page, next page? It started to flow through the Bible. 
when it got to the back of the Bible, it went into the maps and the concordance and stopped. And when it stopped, it formed a heart over the Middle East. Yeah, that doesn't look like a heart. That looks like a butt print to me. What was God saying about... God's not saying anything. This is a false sign. This is a false wonder. These guys are scammers. I believe God was saying that he loves Israel. I, well, that's what he says in this word. <laughs> yes. But he is really putting an explanation mark yes. on that. Uh, when did you realize that this was miraculous? Do you remember uh, some that you use this? But we know it's not. Oil to anoint people. Uh, do you remember the first time you realized this? Since it's supernaturally made. That no, it's not. It's from the Dalton Tractor Supply Company. This is not man-made. No. And by the way, I, th I think you, you told me, Johnny, that uh, a, a uh, engineer or someone you knew on their own had this tested scientifically. And what did the report say about this oil? The analysis came back and they said it had some of the characteristics of mineral oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> when they tested it against the mineral oil sold at the Dalton Tractor Supply Company, wouldn't you know, perfect match. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what are we dealing with here? Uh, well, this is, uh, this is what it means to take God's name in vain. This is blasphemy. This is lying and deceiving using God's name. And it's one of the Ten Commandments, and it is strictly forbidden. In fact, in ancient Israel, in the theocracy of Israel, the penalty for blasphemy was death. The, the children of Israel were commanded by God to purge the evil from their midst. And so I would note, God's name is blasphemed and mocked and ridiculed because of people like this, people like this who flat out make up scam miracles, claim that it's God, and then anybody with just a little bit of common sense can knock the whole thing down. But the miracles that Christ performed were nothing like this. Even his enemies had to admit that that was God working or at least that the miracles took place. They ended up attributing to Christ the fact that they said that uh, he did his miracles by the power of the devil, but they didn't deny that he did them. And I would note, I have yet to see, and I mean this, yet to see one single for real miracle claim made by any tin penny, charismatic, Pentecostal, word of faith, televangelist, YouTube evangelist, or any of the sort, that has been for real validated by real doctors and said this was for real, for real, a miracle. Instead, over and over and over again, in the name of signs and wonders being necessary for the gospel to go forward, because you got to demonstrate the power of God first, right? Y yeah, in the name of all of that, these people are motivated to lie through their teeth and to blaspheme God's name and to speak lies and claim they're hearing God's voice uh, regarding the miracles that they're doing when, in fact, it can be demonstrated that the whole thing is a sham. Tra tra tragic, absolutely tragic. So if you found this helpful, infuriating even, uh, all the information on how you can share the video is down below. And, of course, I uh, need to remind you we can't do what we're doing without your financial support. If you do not already support us financially, visit our website, fightingforthefaith.com. You'll see our three friendly yellow buttons. You can become a patron on Patreon, send a one-time donation in, or you can join our crew. And everybody who joins our crew in the month of uh, February 2020 uh, at Gunner's Mate or above, I will send you an autographed copy of my fine art print titled... Uh, San Clemente Dreaming. And let me thank you for your support. We truly can't do what we're doing here without it. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.